I worked as a virtual assistant for well over a decade, and during that time, I have gone through hundreds of thousands of emails for my clients to help them organize their email inbox. Today, I'm going to walk you through the exact method I used for them and one that I still use for myself today. I'm going to use Gmail for this example, but you can really apply this to any email client. But let's stop talking about this and jump straight in. So for this example, I have an email set up where I have been putting a bunch of email newsletters through just to use for this video. So we're going to pretend that some of these emails are our boss or a close personal friend and that some of them are just junk. Of course, not all of them are, but that's how we're going to treat it just for this example. So here's my inbox and the very first thing we're going to do is get our settings set up properly so that this next process is easier. Currently, we are set up in the default Gmail settings. So to update this, we're going to click on the little gear icon in the top right, and we're going to go to the all settings tab. There's a lot of settings that you can put into place here that are really just personal preference, but we're going to look specifically at the labels section. We're also going to go through the inbox tab to make sure that our categories are set up in a way that we want them to be. By default, you should see promotions and some other checked items here. We don't want that. We want everything to go into one inbox because we're going to create our own inboxes later. So for now, we only want primary setup and the inbox type should be set to default. I also like to check the importance marker because as we start to read emails from people, it will show us emails that are from important people and help us identify spam from actual people that we need to reply to. You also want to make sure that we are using the past actions to predict this because Gmail will learn based on how we respond and approach emails what is actually important to us. So we want that checked. Under our labels, we're gonna to want to choose what default labels we are seeing in our sidebar and what we actually need to see. So I like to hide my start inbox, my snoozed inbox, important chats, sent, and are scheduled by only showing these if there's an unread section. Same for drafts and spam. I want my left sidebar to be really, really clean and only show what I actually need. Now at this point, you can create some new labels, but I really recommend that you seriously consider this before just throwing a bunch of new folders in here. The way that Gmail works is that labels can be used as a folder, but you can also apply an email to multiple different labels. So it's not a folder in the traditional sense because you can put emails in multiple folders. So that's why they're called labels. And other email clients such as Outlook won't really offer this, but I really like Gmail for this exact reason because sometimes something is a bill and also important, so we want it in two different labels. If you are not using Gmail, then you're gonna to have to be a little bit more selective about what folders you set up. So my idea is that less is more. You want it to be simple to pour through your emails and you can always build up your folder system over time. But for now, we wanna start really, really basic. So there's a couple folders I always recommend that we create. The first one is a Z book, which is basically bookkeeping or receipts, but I put a Z in front at the last line item on my list. So this may be different for each one of you. If this is a personal email that you are updating, then this might just be receipts or tax items for your personal taxes. If this is a business account that you're updating, then this might be for your bookkeeper or your accountant to reference later. If you have a combined business and personal account, you may want to create separate folders for each item so that way it's easier at the end of the year or at tax time to separate all of your receipts out. I also recommend a newsletter folder. I personally love newsletters. I get a lot of them and I do think that they are very beneficial, but only when I have time to read them. Newsletters are like reading the news. They should not dictate our life or be the first thing that we see in the morning. We should be able to read them at our leisure, not whenever they decide. And then the next one is going to be a sort of task list. So if you don't have an established task system or to-do system, then you may need to have it be built into your email. So I'm going to make a folder called to-do. The next step here is to actually start the cleanup process. So I'm going to go back into my inbox and we just need to start at the very top. If there are senders that you know you need information from, or let's say we have creator hooks, let's pretend like this is a receipt. So maybe this is my bookkeeper or a subscription that I have that I get every single week. So I know that this is going to always have to go into my Zbook file. What we're gonna do is set up some automation so that these emails automatically go into that file and don't sit in our inbox. There are some emails that I don't need to see. 
So if it's a receipt that I know comes in every single week, I might not need to review that unless I have time. So we're gonna mark it as read and put it in the appropriate folder. So I have my creator hooks email that we're gonna pretend is a weekly receipt. And I'm going to click on my three dots here to open up this option. We want to filter messages like these. And when I choose this, it's going to pull some information from the email to help me identify what emails need to go here. So this one is specifically from this email address. You may need to alter this filter to appropriately get all of the emails in here, but for now this works just fine. So at this point, we're going to hit create filter and we want to make sure that we are applying the filter to all three conversations or however many conversations you have. This will apply the filter to all emails that are already in your inbox. This is how we're cleaning up the inbox in bulk and not having to go through every single message. So for this one, we're going to skip the inbox. We don't want it to go in the inbox at all. Let's say I don't need to even look at it. So I'm also going to mark it as red and then we're going to apply the label ZBook. Once I hit create filter, it'll take just a moment. It will take longer if you have a lot of emails, but these should automatically be marked as read and they will go into my ZBook folder. So if I go to ZBook, we can see those three emails are in here. They're all marked as read and they're no longer in my inbox. I had 70 messages before and now I only have 67. Now let's say that I have another email from the publish press. This is a receipt that I actually need to review, but it still needs to live in ZBook. So I'm going to filter messages like these, the same as I did before, and create a new filter. I wanna make sure to apply these filters to all my conversations. And for this one, we're just going to apply the label ZBook, but I don't want it archived and I don't wanna mark it as red because I do need to see this every time it comes through. So I'm going to hit create filter. And once that filter has been created, when I am in this email, you'll see that there are two different labels assigned. It's in our inbox and it's in the ZBook. So now I can read the email, review it, and when I'm done, instead of deleting it or just going back, I can hit this button right here, archive. This will move it from my inbox and archive it, which will move it into the all mail folder and any applicable labels. Because I had marked it as a ZBook label, it now lives in ZBook. And you can see I have one other item from Publish Press that's also in here while also being the inbox. So you can see these labels applied. In addition to that, if I look at my ZBook label here, on the right side, I can see the number one, which means I have one unread email in this folder. Now let's open up our next email and let's say that this one has a task that needs to be completed on it. So first up, I want to add this to my tasks. Gmail has built in task systems in here. So if you don't already have an external system, then this is a great one to just get started with. So let's add this to a task and let's say that the task is to reply. We'll just call this reply to Emma. So now this email newsletter is a task and it's been assigned a task, but I don't need it in my inbox anymore. So I can either label it as a to-do item and then archive it, or I can set up an ongoing automation that will always mark this newsletter as a task. So I can filter the message like this just before, create a filter, make sure it's applying to all conversations, and then I'm going to apply the label to do. I'm also gonna have to skip the inbox because I don't want it living in my inbox, but I don't wanna mark it as read because I want to make sure that there is a notification on my to-do folder here when I need to add a task or when I need to review an email. We can do a really similar thing with this with creating events. So let's open up this email and let's say that this has some kind of event associated with it that I want on my calendar. So I'm gonna click on this more item and choose create an event. Very similar to creating a task, this is gonna pull in all the email information. If the email actually has some event info, like a location, a time, a meeting link, Google will automatically pull that in. But because this isn't actually an event, I'm just using it as an example, um, the only information it's pulling in here is kind of the topic. So you can see it's trying to figure out the conferencing details and all that stuff. We've confused it a bit and that's great. We can see it on the calendar, but let's go ahead and go back. So now this has been added to our calendar, which we can actually see from our calendar tab here on the sidebar, but we don't need this email anymore because all of our information now lives in the calendar. So instead of hitting delete, I'm just going to hit archive. This is no longer in the inbox and the only place I'll be able to find it is in that all mail section. I always recommend to my clients not to delete emails. 
Number one, because there's not really a reason to delete them. You may have to go back and reference something and it's just easier if it's living somewhere in your inbox. And number two is that data is cheap. Data with Google calendars and Gmail in general is pretty inexpensive. So if you really get to the point where you have to pay for storage, it's not very expensive, or you can start to delete old emails at that point and start from the oldest email going forward to clear up some space. As you start to work through your emails one by one, you may find that there are some things that you just don't need. For example, let's say that this one is one that we don't need to be subscribed to. A lot of times Google will pull an automatic unsubscribe button for you. You can also see this in the inbox by hovering over the right side and seeing unsubscribe. It won't do this for every single email, like this one for example, it doesn't have it, but for the ones that it does, it makes it really quick and easy to remove yourself from the newsletter. Once you have been unsubscribed, you're going to need to remove all of these newsletters from your emails. And the easiest way to do that is to go to filter messages like these. And now we have opened up all of these emails because it's pulled it from the filter. So now I can select all and I can mark them as red if I want to. And then at this point I can either archive or delete them. Let's say I never meant to sign up for this newsletter anyway. I don't need this information. I can go ahead and click delete. I can also go through and check multiple of these. So let's say that this email, this one, this one, this one are all newsletters that I would like to keep. I can do the same method and filter messages like these, which will create a more dynamic filter, including all of those different email addresses. Now I can create the filter, have it skip the inbox and go into my newsletter list. I also want to apply this to all conversations. Make sure you're checking that so you're not having to do this more than once. We're going to create the filter and let that do its thing. Okay, so let's pretend like my inbox is now a little more cleaned up, but I want to be able to see my new email newsletters somewhere that's a little bit less finicky than going into the folder. So let's set this up. I'm going to go into my Gmail settings once again, and we're going to go into the inbox option. And under the inbox type, we're going to choose multiple inboxes. From here, we can set up to five sections with multiple inbox sections. This is a great way to start to divide your emails out so that you can see everything that needs to be read, but everything isn't the priority. So we're gonna say that the section one is going to be newsletters. To learn how to properly format this, you can click learn more about the inbox section, and this will give you some information on how to format each of these. So for example, the label operator is going to be used to identify certain items that are labeled. So let's say label, newsletters, and let's hit save changes to see what this is going to look like. So now we are in our inbox and we can see two different sections. We see label newsletters, we see is starred, and we see our inbox below that. Let's star a couple emails and refresh just to show you what this can look like. There we go. So now on the left side, instead of seeing starred as a label item, we can just see it directly in our inbox. So we see our four starred items in both the starred section and in the inbox section. If I archive these out of inbox, then they'll still live in starred, but they're not gonna be down here anymore. So you need to keep that in mind that you may see doubles depending on if you have archived them or not, or if you've set the filter up in order to move it out of your inbox or not. You can do some more changes with this in the settings, like renaming each section or reordering them. You can also choose if you want the inboxes to be above your regular inbox, below or to the right of them. Personally, I like this right sidebar format just because it works really well for me. I can go through my emails, anything that's important that I need to respond to but I'm not going to respond to right away can be starred and saved on the right side for later. And then when I have time, I can go through my email newsletters. I can also toggle these closed or open just to help me focus on what's put in front of me. And keep in mind that you can select different star icons to give yourself a lot of different options on this inbox. By going to the general tab and settings, you can choose what stars are in use. So maybe you have the star being things that you need to reply to, the exclamation point as something that's important and needs response, and the information I to mark something that you need to look at later. If we go back to our inbox, when I click starred, I can keep clicking through to cycle through each one of these options. Then I can add those into my multi inbox views. We also need to update our language to include just yellow starred and say has yellow star, has red bang, has blue info. 
So that way all of the items go into the appropriate categories. And there we go. You can get really creative with this or just show different inboxes for different clients, whatever works best for you. Cleaning up your inbox is going to take some time, but the more automations you set up and the more you unsubscribe from emails, the less time you're gonna have to put in later. Dedicate just 10 minutes a day to organizing some of your emails. Set a timer and just start at the top of your inbox and work your way down. Getting to inbox zero is about consistency. So when you get new emails or new newsletters, you need to mark them appropriately. Once you have the initial system set up, you should just be able to maintain this in about five or 10 minutes a day by quickly sorting through your emails, marking them as tasks or events, and archiving what you no longer need. If you're interested in checking out more content like this one, then check out our playlist and this recommended video. We will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.